Hello brain lovers, Gregory here from the Brain Academy. So last year, the reputable Washington Post came out with an article saying, ditch the GPS, it's ruining your brain. So of course, I read the article with a lot of attention as you can imagine, right? What did they know that I didn't? I had to find out. Okay, so here's the argument. By using the GPS, you know, the uh, maps in our car or phones, make a right turn. We stop using our internal spatial navigation located in our hippocampus. So we stop stimulating our brain. Here we go. Make a U turn if possible. Hence the ruining of our brain. Now, they base themselves on a 2017 study where researchers asked subjects to navigate a virtual simulation of London's Soho neighborhood and monitored their brain activity, specifically the famous hippocampus. Not surprisingly, those who were guided by directions showed less activity in this part of the brain than participants who navigated without the device. Okay, sure, the research is legit, with completely predictable results. Sure, when you have to find your way by yourself, you have to do more mental effort to focus and remember. Pardon me, uh, I wonder if you could tell me how to get back on the expressway. Hey, fuck your mama! Thank you very much. That's why we use the GPS, right? So we don't have to do that effort anymore. So the author goes on to explain how important the stimulation of the hippocampus is and could even help offset age-related cognitive impairments or even neurodegenerative diseases. He even talks about the famous scary A word. Alzheimer. And again, that is true. A stronger hippocampus will lead to a higher neurogenesis, which is protective of age-related neurodegenerative diseases. I talk about this all the time in the Brain Academy. We even have specific courses dedicated on this subject on how to stimulate your neurogenesis. But saying that the GPS is ruining our brain, really? How do you jump from one to the other? That would imply so many things. For starters, that it is only navigational activity which stimulates the hippocampus. Obviously not. Now, to be fair, to turn off your GPS is a really good exercise for neuroplasticity stimulation. No engines, no computers, just the wind and the sea, and the stars to guide you. And yes, I recommend it. But there are endless ways to stimulate your hippocampus. And navigational activity is only one of them. Two, that we only use our internal spatial navigation when we drive with our car. My gosh. You use your internal spatial navigation each time you go to the freaking bathroom. You really don't need a car or faraway places to do that. What else? Oh yeah, that would imply that before there were even cars, when hardly anyone was traveling, we didn't stimulate our hippocampus. And thus, there must have been massive problems with neurodegenerative diseases. And what about people who don't drive? I am clearly too evolved for driving. I usually don't remember the road if I'm not the one driving. Are they also more subject to Alzheimer? And what about kids? They don't drive cars. It's fascinating absolutely fascinating to see how much nonsense is out there. This, you see, this is how brain myths are born. Come on, if even the Washington Post starts to spread this kind of nonsense. It's not the GPS that ruins our brain. It's this kind of journalism. Ah. So let's be clear. No, the GPS is not ruining your brain. Just like the smartphone isn't ruining your brain either. Sure, we don't remember as many phone numbers as we used to, but there is no transferability of skills anyway. It's not because you're not good at remembering phone numbers that you suddenly can't remember anything anymore. Or the other way around. It's not because you're good at remembering phone numbers that you're also suddenly good at remembering other things. Like names, for example. Jim. Your name is Jim. Yes. No, there's no transferability of skills, so don't sweat it. On the contrary, you're freeing up valuable space up there to use it for other things. It's like books, you know. Books didn't ruin our brains. Before the invention of books, we had to rely on our memory for developing our knowledge. Books didn't make us stupid. They freed us from our limited memory storage. The internet did the same, but on an even much larger scale. You see, technology is not our enemy. Used wisely, it is our biggest ally. The only real question here 
and it's an important one, is what will you do with all that freed up space? And don't forget to like and subscribe. We have new episodes of this vlog coming out every week. And if you want the real stuff, you go to brainacademy.com to get some real hippocampal stimulation. Join our 300,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen your mind.